what will the judge be taking into consideration when deciding whether to issue a gag order? Gag orders are tricky because, of course, they do, they are directed at speech. And so what the judge will be considering is whether this requested gag order sweeps too broadly and actually prevents the former president to, from engaging in protected speech. But of course, the First Amendment isn't absolute, and any speech that is substantially likely to materially prejudice a proceeding um, or to harm any individual person is not. For First Amendment protected speech. So this judge is assessing whether the requested order follows that line. Professor, how common is it for gag orders to be issued in criminal cases? They, you know, it happens, usually not in this type of case. Normally, the kind of case in which you see a gag order involves, you know, violent criminals, um, it, mafia cases, organized crime. Um, and, you know, the reason for that is that, you know, normally in these sorts of white collar cases, we don't have the kind, we don't see the kind of rhetoric that we've seen in the other cases that the former president has faced. So what bar does Trump have to reach in order to convince, meanwhile, the judge to stop these key prosecution witnesses, the Michael Cohen, Stormy Daniels, and, and Karen McDougal, from testifying? Well, this is a high burden. Of course, the court wants to exclude any evidence that will be prejudicial. But of course, what that has to be weighed against whether or not this is relevant and information that goes to the actual charges. So there's this weighing um, that goes on. And what the president will have to show is that the prejudicial effect of this uh, testimony is um, outweighs the way in which it is relevant to those ongoing charges.